Hello everyone and welcome back to the Robin Seelig channel. I have big news. I'm doing my first solo painting exhibition in a decade and you're invited. This is a free event. Pursuing Wonder will be opening in downtown Salt Lake City at WOW Atelier on Friday, December 1st from 6 to 9 p.m. There's going to be free drinks. I'm going to work my pants off to make all new artwork. If you can't make it, that's okay. I'm gonna do my best to document the exhibition and the process, but if you can make it, I would absolutely love to have you there. Or if you know anyone who is within uh, accessible distance, any single one attendee would make my day. In today's video, I'm going to share footage of things that I've made so far, lessons I have learned, the backstory on how the show came to be, and why I haven't done public exhibiting for a number of years now. If you have any insight into my art or your art that might be valuable for me to chew on as I'm prepping for this show, that would be really useful. I have about two months to make a whole new body of work and it's going to be a lot of work, so wish me luck and uh, yeah, let's get into the video. In June, a subscriber reached out to me about a very cool potential painting job and when the client decided to change their design plans and we foregoed, forewent on the project, uh, he offered to have me come in for a meeting about exhibiting instead. Some of you saw my rejected master's portfolio in my YouTube shorts and left very helpful feedback in the comments, so I wanted to use the advice from that to help me make a more cohesive, impressive body of work for this solo show. So getting started, I knew I needed two things, an artist statement and a plan for the imagery of my show, which began with a, a lot of drafting and uh, good and bad ideas, as well as starting my mock-ups. These were really for a starting point to help orient what I was enjoying, what I thought I could make. I started out going into Photoshop and over laying different personal reference photos, and then I printed them and painted on top of them to get a feel of how I could alter them and come up with something a little unique. I liked some of what I made and didn't like others, but I chose my favorite of those mock-ups to get started on first and grabbed a large canvas. I want to make, for the majority, larger works because I do have to fill a whole two or three rooms by myself and there's pretty large wall spaces to exhibit on. Plus Plus, there's just something interesting and impressive about large pieces that I wanted to be able to showcase for this. Showcase me pushing myself artistically and see what I could do if I was forcing myself to evolve more than I, I have been in the past, which has a lot of interesting lessons in it, but I'll get into that a bit later. Initially, for my mock-ups and my artist statement, I was thinking about transient ideas, apparitions, sort of an unfair finished concept of reality, playing off of my search for meaning this last year. And I thought a way I could do that would be by combining portraiture and landscape. But when I got into this first painting, I slowly started to realize I didn't like it. Sometimes when you go to make something and you're not just in the planning phase, things change and that's definitely for the better to be adaptive because my boyfriend walked in and confirmed a sinking suspicion I had that this was beginning to look similar to a movie billboard or announcement. I think it's time to accept that I don't like the face and the sky on this and I'm more excited to paint it as just like a full beautiful landscape so i don't know what that means about how i'm gonna adjust my artist statement for the show or what types of work i want to make but i just feel more drawn to make really pretty landscapes and uh i think i need to just bite the bullet and paint over alan's face I think that's today. At this point, I didn't have my show title or my artist statement really pinned down yet. So as I got closer to the idea of pursuing wonder, this piece started shaping up a lot more in line with what I wanted to speak about for my show. I really took to heart once a piece of advice to make art about what's on your mind. My artist statement drafts were feeling reflective of a sense of lostness that I've been trying to leave behind, and I wanted my focus on this show 
to be what I'm working toward rather than where I've been. An artist statement is supposed to be an accessibility point for viewers to get a glimpse into some of your purposes and motivation behind the artwork that you're making. I realized I wanted to be focusing on giving reverence to caring about things, choosing which things you care about, and developing them. I'll read you part of my working artist statement now. The end of it goes, this season I'm working to claim, protect, and nurture things I care about. Nature is my reminder of life's promising rhythm and majesty. Countering apathy for this show, I want to reference the pursuit of wonder. I started my statement and painting feeling a little bit shaky, but sometimes clarity comes by beginning rather than prior to it. So with an incomplete sense of my destination, I started putting my ideas into action and coming up with pieces that I just genuinely enjoyed. Finding the title Pursuing Wonder felt like the perfect encapsulation of the things that I wanted to paint. I'm going to make a lot of natural scenes, but also, like the first piece I made, I'll incorporate ideas of wonder and imagination, things that should be eye-catching, and hopefully help the viewer to feel a sense of exploration, a sense of wanting to widen their own wonder and find things of beauty to appreciate. This year I've been working on forging personal meeting and adjusting my attitudes toward life. More recently I've been moving from a hope that I can start enjoying hard and meaningful things again to the reality of it. I'm doing better at spotting discomfort I have and making choices about it. And I've found that it's changing me and it gets easier and easier for those ideals to come into reality. This show I feel is a perfect opportunity for that partly because it's vulnerable to do something like this. I'm not sure who will come, I'm not sure what the artwork will turn out like, if I'll like it, if it'll be up to my expectations, but it's pursuit of something that's mattered to me for most of my lifetime, being an artist, making things, creating. I've had kind of an unconventional artist career in the sense that I've been self-represented. When I began, I was involved a little bit more in traditional art spaces, but as I developed a bit more of an online presence and found success by doing content creation, I wanted to dedicate my time to that because it was my avenue to make a living as an artist. In that pursuit, I found that certain things that perform well for capturing attention online aren't necessarily the same as some of the pursuits I had when I was more focused on being in fine arts. So in the very beginning of my career, when I was doing Doing group exhibitions, I think it gave my mind different ideas to focus on and I've been able to return to some of those in prepping for a show like this. Some of the intentions going into the pieces and where I hope they'll end up living if uh, anyone purchases them helps direct me to make things that are more client focused, that are more about crafting something for an impactful viewer experience. And it's hard. It's challenging to make large pieces. It's challenging to come up with a statement that succinctly covers what things you care about, what things you want to present to others, what messaging you want to put out into the world as an artist. But this was part of why I had maybe a slightly weaker portfolio for my master's application and perhaps why I'm a bit distanced from some of the fine art market that I used to be a little bit more in touch with. This show, preparing for the master's application, it asks you to think a little bit more in terms of your themes, your individuality, your style. Working large pushes you to make choices and commit to the values that you're pursuing. You take a lot of time to make the pieces and you know that there's the possibility they won't come out well and so each step of the way is a certain level of commitment and it plays into reinforcing what I wanted out of of this show statement. The idea that I've sort of lacked values, I've turned on a certain amount of apathy in myself to protect myself and it's a bit of a risk being an artist and I'm gonna sink in fully to the risk because time and place has called for it and my attitudes have 
called for it as well. So I am excited. I think that it is helping me to grow. I can't wait to see the surprises of what ends up coming uh, out of me for this exhibition. I think by doing, with an intention behind it, I'll get to learn a lot about myself and prove things to myself that are good. Thank you for watching the video today. Uh, I hope you'll keep up with my updates. I'll be sharing on YouTube as well as on Instagram. It is going to be a busy time. I'll do my best to come out with content in the meantime, but also I will probably have follow up after December 1st. The show is staying up until the end of February, so if you don't have the opportunity to come in December, you could also come in January or February if you happen to be in the area. Maybe you're a skier and you're hitting the slopes, uh, going to Park City, checking out the gallery scene. You know, there's lots of cool stuff to do in Salt Lake. It's not just the Wild West anymore. We have a real thriving culture and city environment, uh, so maybe you could enjoy a little vacation here. I'm excited to continue this journey with you and hopefully meet some of you in December. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.